Hey guys, you may recall I picked up one TV for myself at the early television convention. It was a Stromberg Carlson, a uh, rather impressive, foreboding, imposing set. Um, but it has a very weak, nearly dead picture tube, and it's what launched me to make a series of videos on testing and repairing picture tubes. Well, one of my viewers saw my plight and he donated a new picture tube for the restoration of that TV and it just arrived today. Extremely well packed, double boxed foam custom packing and he left me a note inside. That's what we're focused on right now. So, behind this it is a 16 AP4 metal cone CRT. Now this is the first metal cone CRT as I discovered while doing some research um, for that CRT restoration series. Uh, so I was curious about how they made this metal cone and uh, while reading up on it I found some articles that came out at the time uh, announcing the 16 AP4 from RCA with their breakthrough uh, in manufacturing technology. I'll uh, include some links to that. And uh, thanks to a bunch of you uh, commenting and the help of that article, I know a bit more about how these were made. In particular this metal, which they were called spun steel. Uh, actually, I have seen it done before, I just didn't know that's what it was called, where they put it on a metal lathe and um, have a bar that rides up against it and they press uh, the metal to form a, a shape going from, uh, say, a disc to a cone. Uh, this one doesn't have uh, the really pronounced ridges though, this is a bit smoother. Uh, but I've seen it before with people making bowls and decorative items, not actual cones like this, but uh, I assume it's a very similar process. I also found a really cool photo um, of a worker at an RCA plant applying this conductive coating with a brush to the inside of a CRT. So you may have heard me mention uh, about the outer conductive coating being called Aquadag. Well, there's an inner conductive coating as well, um, and that is attached to one of the electrodes, or the high voltage, depending on the design. So in this case, I think actually, this is all high voltage, I think this may be as well. And it all helps to focus and channel the electron beam all the way to the front of the CRT. So, according to his uh, label on the side here, Good 100%, 16 AP4A. I believe the A means it's tinted glass. So let's uh, take a little look see at the front of this. Also notice how crazy long this is. This this was early, 48, 49, and they still had really shallow deflection. I think this would be 53 degrees. Uh, very shortly after they came out with the 16 GP4, which is 70 degrees, and I think that later they may have had 90 degrees, so they, they started getting shorter and shorter, and this cone started getting uh, flatter and flatter. This is the first gen. Kind of heavy, too. Maybe this steel's heavier than, sure, it's 16 inch, but boy, compared to that 12 inch that I was uh, also working on recently, this, this weighs quite a bit more. Yeah, that does look tinted. It looks kind of grayish compared to clear. Here, let me uh, grab the 12 inch and let's... Here's the 12 inch. I think they have the same deflection angle. Maybe this is 70 or 60. Uh, they look pretty close. I believe the increments go 54, 70, 90, and then 110. This has the more prominent ridges. And I'd say it weighs half of that. So it's four inches different in diameter. I think it weighs about twice as much. And actually this looks kind of frosted. Ah, this is also an A. Well, there we go. So, so much for comparing the two. <laughs> They're both the same type of front glass. Uh, yeah, there are, there are differences. So this was made by Rolland originally, and it was rebuilt by Selsun at some point. This is a Zenith thing. I think only Zenith. Zenith bought Rolland 
but I believe only Zenith used this CRT and they would have made it at their plant but not only is this a bit different but uh, this is the shape of this the, amount, the length of it it's a slightly different and that's what makes these so darn hard to replace yes there are all glass 16 and 12 inch CRTs but they're shaped very different different deflection angles they're shorter the, the whole bell is shaped very different uh, so it, it can be a bit of a challenge and these suckers are hard to find now I haven't leaded another one of these too because these are really this kind of blew my mind when I when I saw this that the first PDP computer uh, 1960 used this for the monitor ten years after they were obsolete maybe they found a big stash of them surplus but yeah I'll, I'll include a link a computer monitor from 1960 and it was completely round and with all this high voltage and all that I mean even if they were cheap oh, why would you want to go through all that extra hassle by 1960 we have the the predicted type short 110 degree much larger CRTs lighter weight bigger screen rectangular why would you use this unless maybe they had some applications that were graphical in nature and they wanted to get Def, def, use XY deflection and have a screen that was completely round f for some purposes. I, I don't know. Otherwise, I find that buzz right. neon light bulbs are coming alive here. We want a half moon on the left. And this one should be out. Let's jump right up to emissions. a little weak but we're climbing I don't know when he last had this power, left, last had this powered up a yeah, fantastic cutoff and we're in the green I just needed a little a little uh, time to warm up those neon bulbs are Looking really good now. <laughs> Certainly a lot better than the one out in the set. Yeah, this this will this will work just fine. And we're still climbing. I'll let it sit for a few minutes. Now unfortunately I am up to my eyeballs with customers sets. I've got two of them on the workbench right now in fact. Um, but it's starting to, to ease up a little bit. Uh, probably because with my re reorganized workbench I, I can work faster now more efficiently and I've been just blowing through the predictors. Um, I also need to free up space to bring that set still out in the garage. I don't have anywhere to move it in. Of course, I can work on it with just the chassis on the workbench, but uh, i got to clear out some sets first. So it'll probably be uh, a little bit of time until I actually have that set um, where I can work on it, but I am itching to work on it. Same with the Magnavox I picked up recently too, but customers come first generally. I do take a break from customer sets now and then, just for my own sanity and enjoyment. Um, but I, I have a pretty, pretty big backlog I got to get through. And of course, uh, I want to do some alignment videos. Next alignment video is going to be on uh, this TV right up here, which is an Admiral, and it has a staggered tuning. Um, and it's at a point now where the TV is fully functional. I just need to get the radio working. Uh, that'll be a really, it's a fantastic beginner's TV and a good TV to uh, demonstrate alignments with too. Alright, we are holding steady well into the green with a very good life test. So, thank you very much Dave. This will definitely be finding a new home and that's Stromberg Carlson. A uh, very high-end, well-made set. Uh, <laughs> grateful to, to, to put it uh, mildly because these are not easy to come by especially good ones because they 
uh, go leaky, and I don't think they made all that many of them to begin with. So uh, that's going to be it for now. Uh, hopefully, in the not to do some future, I will be pulling that chassis out and muscling it up onto the workbench. But uh, coming up next, we're going to be wrapping up an Admiral with a uh, alignment and uh, a bunch more Predicta content. Thanks for watching.